cholera, is an intestinal infection caused by the Vibrio cholerae. Vibrio cholerae organisms are comma-shaped, gram-negative bacteria, which looks like little red or pink comma shapes on a gram stain. And Vibrio cholerae is actively modal through a flagellum which it uses for movement through the gastrointestinal tract. So how was cholera transmitted and what are some of the risk factors? Cholera is caused by ingestion of contaminated water containing cells of Vibrio cholerae. It can also be contracted from contaminated food, especially improperly cooked shellfish. Though Vibrio cholerae survive well in their aquatic environment, it is sensitive to stomach acids. So persons with impaired stomach acid secretion or who are taking antacids are at higher risk of infection. And another risk factor is blood group O patients. So, individuals with a positive or negative O blood groups are more likely to be infected with cholera. So how does Vibrio cholera cause infection? We first ingest the bacteria. It enters into the stomach, it survives the gastroacidic environment, and enters into the small intestine. And once it gets into the small intestine, it starts to multiply in the intestinal mucosa. Then it starts to produce cholera toxin. This toxin binds to the plasma membrane of intestinal epithelial cells and releases an enzymatically active subunit that causes a rise in cyclic adenosine monophosphate, or CAMP production, resulting high intracellular CAMP level blocks the absorption of sodium and chloride by the microvilli and promotes the secretion of chloride, bicarbonate, potassium, and water by the intestinal epithelial cells. The result is watery diarrhea containing masses of intestinal mucus and epithelial cells called rice water stools from their appearance. And this watery diarrhea causes dehydration and electrolyte loss. While the incubation time for Vibrio cholera can take hours to two to three days, severe dehydration and depletion of electrolytes can happen within four to 12 hours of the first bout of diarrhea. These imbalances can lead to symptoms like disorientation, dry mouth, swollen tongue, sunken eyes, and cold clammy skin. Other, even more severe, fatal complications can come from depleted electrolytes and water in the blood like low levels of bicarbonate can cause metabolic acidosis and deep and labored breathing called Kussmaul breathing. Or low levels of potassium can cause muscle dysfunction, including leg cramps, weakness, and low chloride and sodium can cause headaches, poor balance, disorientation, seizures, and coma. Finally, severe dehydration can cause hypovolemic shock with a significant decrease in blood pressure. So how can we diagnose cholera? You can do stool cultures for Vibrio cholera, and in some places where there is not good access to labs, like some developing countries, they have stool dipsticks to quickly check if someone has cholera or not. The most important part of treatment consists of water and electrolyte replacement to correct the severe dehydration and salt depletion. Many antimicrobial agents are effective against Vibrio cholera, but these play a secondary role in patient management. Oral tetracycline or doxycycline tend to reduce stool output in cholera and shorten the period of excretion of vibrios. Do not forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.